The NFL is a lot like the comic book world. There are plenty of good guys and heroes, plenty of bad guys and villains, and also some guys that are straight up crazy for better or for worse. We have seen a ton of crazy mofos throughout the years, but who stands as the craziest of them all? Here's a look at the craziest mofo in every NFL team's history. Arizona Cardinals, Conrad Dobler. Few players in NFL history are ranked as high on the crazy meter as Conrad Dobler. We could tell you about all his dirty antics or the fact that Sports Illustrated once put him on their cover with the headline, Pro Football's Dirtiest player, but maybe it's best if you just listen to some of the things Dobler has said about himself. For instance, there was this time he described his play on the field by saying, some people get vasectomies, I used to give them. He also famously admitted, I'll do anything I can get away with, spoken like a certified crazy mofo. Atlanta Falcons, Deion Sanders. The greatest cornerback in NFL history brought a ton of swagger and charisma on and off the field. Sanders, of course, had his primetime and Leon Sandcastle alter egos, and he appeared at MC Hammer's Straight to My Feet video. That's a crazy mofo if we've ever seen one. Baltimore Ray Ravens, Ray Lewis. We'll try not to overuse the word here, but like primetime, Lewis had a real special type of swagger on the field. He made numerous television appearances as well, and nobody could dance to Nelly's hot in here like him. The dude even beat Tony Gonzalez in a lip sync battle. This is one crazy mofo that you did not want to mess with. Buffalo Bills, Richie Incognito. When we say crazy mofo here for Incognito, we don't mean it nicely. Of course, there was the infamous Jonathan Martin bullying scandal when they were teammates in Miami. Following the Bills' 2017 wildcard loss, to the Jacksonville Jaguars, Yannick Ngakwe accused Incognito of making a racist comment towards him. The Bills wisely released Incognito in the 2018 offseason, and he was involved in two incidents soon after, including a heated confrontation with someone at a fitness club and an arrest for threatening to shoot employees at a funeral home. Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton. There's a lot to love about Cam Newton's personality. I mean, how many other guys have you seen floss during a game? Gotta take care of your dental health, after all. Newton also has perhaps the most unique fashion sense of all NFL players. That much is true. Some of his outfits are downright crazy, but I guess it all makes sense. Crazy wardrobe for a crazy mofo. Cincinnati Bengals, Chad Johnson, aka Ocho Cinco. For starters, you have to be crazy in a very cool way to change your surname to Ocho Cinco. Ocho Cinco, of course, revolutionized the touchdown celebration alongside other great wide receivers like Terrell Owens and Randy Moss. This guy had a huge personality, which also made him a super cool mofo. And don't forget that in the summer of 2013, he received a 30-day jail sentence for tapping his lawyer on the butt in court after the latter was able to work out a plea deal for him. We miss this guy. The NFL just isn't the same without him. Chicago Bears. Jim McMahon. McMahon was the quarterback of the legendary 1985 Bears team that won Super Bowl XX. Even though he was a solid signal caller during his time in the Windy City, McMahon also developed a bit of a crazy mofo reputation, to a degree. McMahon agitated head coach Mike Ditka and owner George Hallis when he carried a beer around during a public event after the Bears drafted him in 1982. On top of that, McMahon received a $5,000 fine for wearing an Adidas headband. At the time, the company's gear wasn't authorized by the league for players to wear. McMahon then poked fun at Commissioner Pete Rozelle by switching to a headband that had the latter's name on it. Only a crazy mofo would do something like that. Cleveland Browns, Jim Brown. Not only is he the greatest Cleveland Brown and the greatest running back of all time, but you could argue he's one of the most dominant NFL players ever, period. That said, the pro football icon ruined his image with plenty of off-the-field troubles. He was arrested numerous times for assault. This also included attacks on a close friend, a sheriff, and various women. He also made heinous threats towards his wife. Brown had to undergo counseling and community service, and he spent three months in prison before he was released in 2002. Dallas Cowboys, Michael Irvin. Irvin had himself a great career in Dallas, but he's also made numerous headlines for all the wrong reasons. For starters, he was accused of sexual assault multiple times, and he was arrested for drug possession. And in the 1998 offseason, Irvin got himself into trouble after he stabbed teammate Everett McIver with a pair of scissors over a haircut. Jerry Jones paid McIver to remain silent on the incident, but it made front page news anyway. Denver Broncos, Lyle Alzado. The former All-Pro and Pro Bowl defensive end was one of the craziest mofos ever. For starters, did you know that he took up boxing and even competed in an exhibition match against the legendary Muhammad Ali? Alzado struck fear in the hearts of his opponents due to his nasty style of play. The thing is, though, he was actually a great guy off the field and was heavily involved in philanthropy. But still, you have to be one crazy mofo to step foot in the boxing ring against the greatest. Detroit Lions and Dominic Sue. The veteran defensive end has been among the league's most dominant players of the 2010s. And He's performed many generous acts off the field. But during his tenure at the Lions, Sue was a crazy mofo on the field. During a 2011 Thanksgiving game against the Packers, Sue received an ejection and eventual two-game suspension for stomping on Evan Dietrich Smith. Three years later, he was hit with his $70,000 fine after stomping on Aaron Rodgers' calf. Seriously though, who goes around stomping on people like this? Green Bay Packers, Brett Favre. 
Favre was universally loved among his teammates and Packer Nation, and there are a million stories about the guy to prove that he's a crazy mofo. For example, he injured Mark Brunel after throwing a dodgeball square at his face during some innocent horseplay. Brunel also told a story about Favre and friends trespassing to go deer hunting on one occasion. NFL Mike's also caught him having some strange and random conversations with not only his teammates, you thank God I never farted, but with referees and opponents as well. Houston Texans, Brian Cushing. Cushing was one crazy mofo during his nine seasons in Houston. He was suspended twice for violating the league's PEDs policy, and on top of that, he developed a reputation for being a somewhat dirty player, like the time he headbutted Sean Laval on the Cleveland Browns during a 2011 game. The craziest thing about that headbutt was Cushing didn't even have a helmet on at the time, and Laval did. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the smart guy that headbutts on with no helmet on. I'm just keeping my helmet on for the rest of the game. I look like a psycho. Who headbutts a guy wearing a helmet with his bare head? A crazy mofo, that's who. Indianapolis Colts, Arch Schlichter. The Colts drafted the Ohio State signal caller with the number four pick in 1982. But unfortunately, Schlichter couldn't keep it clean off the field. Schlichter had a serious gambling addiction, and he went through his entire 350,000 signing bonus in a short time. He was racking up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, and he missed the entire 1983 season due to suspension. As Schlichter's gambling addictions and debts racked up, the team ultimately cut ties with him in 1985. Sadly, his gambling problems never went away, and he he served several years in prison. Jacksonville Jaguars, John Henderson. The six foot seven Henderson was one of the NFL's most feared players during his career. The two time Pro Bowl defensive tackle used his intimidating size and strength to his advantage, but for his biggest scare tactic, he enlisted the help of a Jaguars trainer. Henderson had a pregame ritual where he'd get the team trainer to slap him hard across the face. <laughs> oh, Joe, that ain't good enough. Come on, Joe! Ah! Thank you, baby! Thank you! Make it blood come from my damn mouth! It was a way of getting him amped up for the games, and it seemed to work more often than not. Kansas City Chiefs, Larry Johnson. The former Penn State standout was a star running back for the Chiefs from 2003 to 2009. Unfortunately, Johnson derailed his career with numerous legal troubles off the field. From 2003 to 2014, Johnson was arrested five times for assaulting women, plus a sixth time for attacking a male in 2014. During the 2009 season, the Chiefs were forced to release Johnson after he made homophobic comments. And with that, the Chiefs would try to distance themselves from Johnson forever, doing everything possible to erase any memories or association with him. Los Angeles Chargers. Sean Merriman. The Maryland product was among the NFL's most dominant players during the 2000s, earning a trio of Pro Bowl selections with the Chargers. He was also named Defensive Rookie of the Year in 2005. However, Merriman also developed a reputation for being a pretty nasty guy on and off the field. For starters, he received a four-game suspension in 2006 for violating the league's steroid policy. A 2009 Sports Illustrated poll found that 2.3% of players thought Merriman was the NFL's dirtiest player, too. Los Angeles Rams, Deacon Jones. You have to be a crazy mofo, in a good way, to come up with the term sacks. But that's exactly what the Rams legend did. Jones was so dominant as a pass rusher that he cleverly coined the term for one of the most significant stats in football today. The Hall of Famer was an unstoppable force through his career, and that's what made him a crazy mofo. He was a guy that nobody ever wanted to deal with. Miami Dolphins, Ricky Williams. Williams led the NFL in rushing during the 2002 campaign, and he had a total of five 1,000-yard seasons. Seasons. But he also received numerous suspensions during his NFL career, mostly because of his habit for smoking marijuana. Williams had to miss the entire 2006 season, and after playing for Toronto's CFL team, he returned to the Dolphins in 2007. Williams may have been a crazy mofo during his time in Miami, but he's since recovered and found peace in his post-playing career. Minnesota Vikings, Randy Moss. Moss may be a six-time pro bowler and a proud member of Canton, but the second greatest wideout of all time had numerous on and off the field issues. Sure, there was the mooning at Lambeau and the many rifts with the coaches, but perhaps his craziest incident came during the 2002 season, when he was arrested after bumping a female traffic officer with his vehicle while trying to perform an illegal turn, which led to a serious fine. New England Patriots, Rob Gronkowski. Oh, that Gronk guy. From racking up a $102,000 bar tab to body slamming a friend at a bar. You name it. There's always a fun story to tell on and off the field for Rob Gronkowski, so he was an easy choice for us here. New Orleans Saints, Kyle Turley. The San Diego State product played with the New Orleans Saints from 1998 to 2002, earning a first-team All-Pro selection in 2000. But everybody remembers Turley for coming to the defense of teammate Aaron Brooks during a 2001 game against the New York Jets. After Damian Robinson grabbed Brooks' face mask, Turley came 
came in and went off on Robinson, even taking his helmet off and throwing it across the field. The club fined him $25,000 for the incident, but it cemented Turley's legacy in the bayou as one crazy mofo. New York Giants, Lawrence Taylor. Widely considered to be the greatest defensive player of all time, the Giants legend and two-time Super Bowl champion had a reputation for being a wacko both on and off the field. LT was suspended multiple times by the NFL for drug violations, and it unfortunately held him and the Giants back from accomplishing even more together. Since his retirement, Taylor has also been arrested for multiple offenses. New York Jets, Joe Namath. There is a reason why a 2019 survey ranked Namath as the number one character in NFL history. Broadway Joe cemented his legacy when he correctly guaranteed that the Jets would beat the heavily favored Baltimore Colts in Super Bowl III. Namath was among the top celebrities in the Big Apple during his playing days, and he certainly had a way with the ladies, that's for sure. And don't forget the time where an intoxicated Namath was hitting on Susie Colbert during a 2003 game. Oh, and the team is struggling. I want to kiss you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. I want to kiss you. Thanks, Joe. I'll yeah! That Namath guy wasn't afraid to party hard Ric Flair style. He'll always be a crazy mofo. Oakland Raiders, Jack Tatum. Tatum was a key part of the Raiders' nasty defense in the 70s, earning three Pro Bowl selections while leading to a Super Bowl XI championship. But the elite safety developed a reputation as a merciless, violent player, especially after he inadvertently left Patriots wide receiver Daryl Stingley paralyzed for life following a brutal collision in a 1978 preseason contest. Tatum earned the nickname The Assassin because of his fierce style of play. There was just no avoiding it. He was as intimidating as they came. Philadelphia Eagles, Terrell Owens. T.O. only spent two seasons with the Eagles, but he sure has a lot of lasting memories in the city of brotherly love. Owens openly feuded with teammate Donovan McNabb, even though the two helped Philly reach Super Bowl 39. He was suspended from the team during the 2005 campaign, due in large part to his frustration over receiving little attention for his 100th career touchdown. And don't forget the time he allowed the media to film him doing sit-ups in his own driveway. No, T.O., we miss those crazy times. Pittsburgh Steelers, James Harrison. One of the greatest undrafted products of all time, Harrison was also among the most polarizing players during his career. His aggressive and reckless style led to more than $100,000 in fines. And on top of that, he was arrested for assaulting his girlfriend in 2008. And in a 2011 interview with Men's Journal, Harrison offered these strong words towards Commissioner Roger Goodell. If that man was on fire and I had to piss him out, I wouldn't do it. I hate him and will never respect him. Jeez, tell us how you really feel, James. San Francisco 49ers, Bill Romanowski. Many consider Romanowski to be the dirtiest player in NFL history, and for good reason. He was accused of making numerous racist comments throughout his career. Not only that, but Romanowski broke Kerry Collins' jaw during a preseason game, and he ended the career of Marcus Williams after punching him during a 2003 practice when they were teammates in Oakland. San Fran, Oakland, Denver, you name it. Wherever Romanowski went, he was a crazy mofo for all the wrong reasons. Seattle Seahawks, Marshawn Lynch. Eating Skittles to celebrate a touchdown was crazy. So were his epic conversations with the media. And who can forget the time when Lynch said, I'm just here so I won't get fined throughout his Super Bowl 49 media session. Gotta love Lynch. He's one of a kind. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Warren Sapp. Despite his dominance on the field, Sapp's play was often overshadowed by some awful antics. There was a cheap shot on Chad Clifton of the Green Bay Packers in 2002, where he also threatened Packers head coach Mike Sherman. Even during his retirement, Sapp continues to find himself in trouble. One day after Super Bowl 49, he was arrested for soliciting a prostitute and assault. At this rate, he'll never shake off that crazy mofo label. Tennessee Titans, Albert Hainsworth. It's a shame, Haydensworth could have very well been a Hall of Fame talent, but his attitude, hot temper, and laziness prevented that from happening. Haynesworth got into trouble during a 2006 game where he stomped on the forehead of Dallas Cowboys center Andre Garrod. Haynesworth was ejected and suspended for five games as a result of the stomp, and rightfully so. Garrod needed 30 stitches to treat the wound. One year later, Haynesworth received a $5,000 fine for a dirty tackle on Maurice Jones-Drew. The only thing crazier than Haynesworth was the fact that the Redskins actually gave him a $100 million contract in 2009 despite his obvious lack of discipline. Washington Redskins, Clinton Portis. The former Pro Bowl running back became popular for donning many unique alter egos during his playing career. Some of these included Choo Choo, Sheriff Gonna Getcha, and Dollar Bill, among others. And of course, Portis admitted that he even took shots of Hennessy prior to games. You have to be a crazy mofo to do those types of things. It's no wonder Portis was so beloved during his playing career. But well, hey, who do you think is the craziest mofo from your favorite NFL team's history? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton, and we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. 
But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.